Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be teaching on war in heaven. In the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 5, John sees Jesus is caught up into heaven. He's caught up into his throne. There's some good word right here, church. There's revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit of God. Who is the good stuff? Now, John sees Jesus ascended to heaven. Book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 10, Jesus ascended far above all the heavens. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. We see there appeared another wonder. Remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9, the beast that's coming is coming with all lying signs and wonders of the devil. So the devil's got some wonders too. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3, that wonder is the devil, the dragon, standing in heaven. Now, the dragon is also Egypt, Ezekiel chapter 29 and verse 3. He's standing there with seven heads, which are the seven kings and the ten horns. He's standing in heaven with those men from the earth. That's right. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. Now, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 7 and 8, we see that because the beast is standing in heaven with those kings of the earth, we see there's war in heaven because the devil came to draw a third of the stars. Ephesians, chapter 2, and verse 2, we see the prince of the power of the air. Colossians, chapter 2, and verse 15, we see the fight is against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21, far above. That's where Jesus went. He went far above principalities, powers, might, dominion. I'm sorry about that, church. Dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that world which is to come. Church, we see that Jesus had to fight those that are in other heavens. Principalities, powers. Jesus ascended far above those heavens. Now in the book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 20, we see that the stars fought from heaven. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 34 says that the armies, they went, they took flight to fight the aliens. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 35 tells us there's an army in heaven. So church, we're seeing that Something's going on in the heavens because the devil is always fighting against God and against his kingdom. We see that he has an army in heaven. We see that the devil went into heaven and there was war in heaven and he was cast out. Now in the book of Isaiah chapter 13 starting in verse 4 through 9 tells us the far country that Jesus is returning from. From the end of heaven. Ephesians chapter 4 and 10. He ascended far above all heavens. If you read the book of Mark chapter 13 and verse 34. Jesus is talking about himself. The one that took the far journey. Verse 4. We see the battle. We see in verse 9. The wrath. Now that's in uh, Isaiah chapter 13 verses 4 and verse 9. We're seeing the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming for the battle. He's not only going to have to battle those that's on the earth, but those that are come from other places, other heavens, to come to battle. Now we see, here we go, church. In verse 10, we see the signs in heaven. We see the star being darkened, falling to the earth. We see the sun darkened, and we've seen the moon blood. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 and 30, this is supposed to be the sign of immediately after the tribulation and the return of Jesus Christ. When Jesus returns, it will be from the east. The reason why I believe, I believe by the Holy Spirit, there is a gateway in the sun. And Jesus is returning from that gateway. In the book of Psalms 103 and verse 12, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 27, he's returning out of the east. We see in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, the east gate. We see in Ezekiel chapter 43 and verse 11. We see in Ezekiel chapter 44 and verse 1, the east gate. Now in the book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 13, he says he will shake the heavens and the earth and remove out of her place in the wrath. 
Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 26 and verse 27, God's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Now, Isaiah chapter 34 and 4 tells us that the host shall fall like fallen figs from a fig tree. Because we see that the devil has strongholds in some of those heavens. Nahum chapter 3 and verse 12 says that he has strongholds. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 13 says, The stars of heaven fell into the earth even as a fig tree, casting her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, because they went to the battle. Judges chapter 5 and verse 20, The stars fought from heaven. That's why Satan went up into heaven. And Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3 and 4, He's gone up into heaven to gather himself an army. And when Jesus returns, he will fight those in the heaven as his return. In the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4, what do we see? We see the devil with his tail. He drew a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 15 says, The prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So we are seeing the false prophet standing in heaven in Revelation 12 and 4. Through his lies of prophecy, he has drawn the third of the stars, gathering him to the battle. We see in re that in the book of Revelation chapter 16 and 13, the false prophet. In the book of Revelation chapter 10 and verse 3, we see the lion, which is Jesus. He utters his voice. Revelation chapter 5 and 5, he is the lion of Judah, the city of David. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. Now, Joel chapter 2 and verse 10, Joel says the signs. Woo, they know the signs, church. The signs in the heavens, the sun and the moon and the stars darken. Verse 11. Here we go, church. What did I tell you in Matthew 24 and verse 29 and 30? And immediately after this sign, Jesus returns. He's returning for the battle. Joel chapter 2 and verse 11. The Lord uttereth. His voice before his army. Woo! What we see in Revelation chapter 10 and verse 3. The lion uttered his voice. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a common one. There's a blood moon. And the sun is darkened and the stars are darkened. He's returning immediately after the great tribulation. And he's going to utter his voice before his army. Glory, hallelujah. We see in the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 25, the signs of the sun and the moon and the stars. We also see the distress of the nations. The seas are, ra the waves are roaring. That's right. The reason why you see that church is because they're preparing an army against Jesus Christ to meet him on the earth at his return. The devil's army is ready to battle against Jesus Christ. We see in the book of Psalms, Chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. We see in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 55, Babylon is the waves that roar. They are the great waters. Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12 says, The sea and the waves are nations. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 15. The waters that the whore, the harlot sits upon, the waters that Babylon is sitting upon is people, a multitude of nations and people because they prepared an army against God. Nahum chapter 2 and verse 3 says the chariots. Now listen to this church. I did some videos on chariots. It says the chariot shall be with flame torches in the day of his preparation. Talks about the fir trees. Nahum chapter 4 and I'm sorry, Nahum chapter 2 and verse 4 says, The chariots rage in the streets. They seem like torches. They run like lightning. Joel chapter 2 and verse 5, That chariot is the return of Jesus Christ, but the deceiver is also coming on chariots, church. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 27, Jesus said that he'd be like the lightning that comes out of the east and shines into the west. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13 and 14. We see that the living creatures ran like flashes of lightning because Ezekiel is seeing the chariots of God. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, The chariots are coming. Those on other worlds, they want 
man on this earth to be able to reach heaven. Even in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 4, we see they were trying to reach heaven. Church, I saw in a vision the heavens were opened and I stood upon the earth and I watched the gateways opened. Flashes of lightning, streaks of light, chariots were coming down to this earth. Revelations chapter 8 and verse 10, a great star fell from heaven burning as it were a lamp. Nahum chapter 2 and verse 3, he says the chariots are flaming torches. Verse 4, they rage through the streets like torches. They run like lightning. Psalms chapter 20 and verse 7, some put their trust in chariots. Revelation chapter 8 and verse 10, that great star that fell was burning as it were a lamp. Listen to me, church. Isaiah chapter 62 and 1 says the burning lamp is salvation. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 8. Chariots of salvation. Now, Habakkuk's talking about the chariots of God. But we also know in Revelations chapter 8 and verse 10 that deceiver is also coming as a chariot of salvation burning as it were a lamp. We also see the chariots of salvation Habakkuk is talking about is the chariots of God. Now church, I did videos on these chariots. I've been trying to warn y'all. Psalms chapter 68 and verse 17 tells us the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands. Amen, church. Those on other worlds are indeed coming. They're coming for the battle. They are all taking their seats, taking their places, preparing for the final battle against our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But church, we know the end and we win, praise God. There's victory. In Jesus. Amen. We're on the winning side.